The views expressed and the opinions given by the individual host and their guests do not necessarily reflect those of Para-X, its affiliates, or its sponsors. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Illuminating the Paranormal, opening your mind to the possibility. I hope everyone is doing well this evening, and, uh, well, everything's been kind of crazy lately, but uh, let's just have some fun tonight instead. Well, I wanted to let everybody know that my our weather up here in the Midwest has finally, finally, it's warm, but we got the occasional cool day, but uh, we're hitting our 70s, 80s, and 90s, like today was 93, so nice and extra warm out there, so everything's starting to pop for uh, my plants to go back into the garden, so, oh, I did get my herb garden planted, it's all set, I had some really huge herbs in our regular garden, and I got everything moved over to its own special space and just a little herb garden for me so now when I go out there I can get fresh herbs so when I go to create those custom smudge sticks or to cook I got some good fresh stuff so it was actually a really good weekend for me all right well tonight I have with me some great guests actually right now I only have one of them with me um, I do have the Booth brothers Christopher got a call early this morning. He is actually out on a job, which at this point in time, nobody's going to say no to. So actually, kudos to you, Christopher. I'm glad you're able to be called to go do something. So Philip is still here with us, but let me tell you a little bit about these gentlemen. Uh, Let's see, Christopher is a Levin Award winner, including Fright Night 2016, Filmmaker of the Year, Producer, Director, Composer, Author, Production Designer of Films, TV, and Documentaries for Sci-Fi Channel, Chiller, NBC Universal, Sony Pictures, Redbox, Amazon, Destination America, Discovery, Travel Channel, I take a big breath there. Netflix Productions, iTunes, Disney. It, well, it just goes on and on, people. And he is the CEO of Spook Productions and Twin Talk Entertainment, known for his films Dead Still, Death Tunnel, The Possessed, Spooked, Children of the Grave, The Exorcist File, and Dark Place. Now, most of these you can find on Sci Fi Channel. Sony Pictures, and Amazon. But with us on the phone tonight is Philip, and let me tell you a little bit about him. This gentleman is an editor, a writer, a cinematographer, director of visual effects, and producer, and he has some great films out that he has done with his brother. Uh, let's see, uh, 2005, they did Death Tunnel. 2007 was Dark Place. Uh, oh, yes, also Shadow Box in 2005, and one in 2014 that was called Dead Still. So please help me welcome Philip Adrian Booth. Philip, how are you this evening? Oh, I think under all the circumstances, I'm pretty good, actually. How are you? Doing well, doing actually pretty well. So, you know, with all the craziness out there, it's nice to just step down in my studio turn on pair X, chat with friends, and just leave the craziness outside, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, yeah. So, I don't know if anybody here is aware, but Philip and Christopher Booth, they're not just brothers. They're twins, and they look an awful lot like each other. So, i got to ask, Philip, did you guys, did you... Christopher, drive your parents and teachers crazy when you were younger? <laughs> we drove them crazy regardless whether we looked alike or not. 
<laughs> Should you guys ever I do mean, any think, switching up? <laughs> yeah, well, I think to all twins, here's a call out to all twins out there. Do not dress them the same. Twins do not want to be dressed the same. We were dressed the same as kids. I went to school. It was a tough thing. And I think it's crazy because for the longest time, when twins want to fight for their own identity, you know, they really do. Mm -hmm. and, and because they're individuals and, and everybody would refer to them as the boys or the twins. And, you know, if we would use them, our older brother would get his, like a present, say it was like Pink Floyd or something, or an album or whatever, uh -huh. whatever it was, you know, two, a two disc set or whatever. And <laughs> he'd give part one, disc one to Chris and disc two to me. <laughs> I just want my own gift, you know? Right, so, exactly. That was kind oh. of silly. And of course, everybody <laughs> asked, well, what happened? Did you guys switch up with girlfriends and stuff? I oh, always my. Get that <laughs> and I don't know. I think I think that they pretty much figured that out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> before, it was, before it was crucial, but we, yeah, we had yeah. some fun time. It was a funny story. I think as twins, you fight for your own identity. And in 2004... 2000, we were in bands together, Chris and I, back in, in Los Angeles. We opened up for Motley Crue, and we did all kinds of fun stuff. Awesome! We, band, and then we did our own stuff, and then when we did Death Tunnel, which led to Spooked, the documentary version of Wade Hill Sanatorium, Ray Canella at Sci-Fi Channel said, hey, you know, this is amazing. I want to do a show about filmmakers that go in and have the real horror that happens to them, you know, while they're filming a horror movie. And that's mm -hmm. what we want to do with an angle. If, if you can do that, if you can create an 88-minute show, we'll give you a show on sci-fi. So that's what we did. But the reason why I brought that up is he goes, I want to push the Booth Brothers. We were not the Booth Brothers really till that point. I don't think a lot of people know that. Okay. We're not the gospel band, by the way. There's a gospel <laughs> band, a very famous gospel band called the Booth Brothers. But yeah, definitely we not. not. Booth, we were not <laughs> yeah, we were not known as the Booth Brothers until we did um, Spooked. And okay. Echo, and that's when we first started. Nice. Now, Death Tunnel, that's the one uh, about Waverly, correct? Oh, yeah, that's... that's is an amazing place, and everybody knows that Slipknot oh, yeah. has been there. That Waverly Hills is probably would be one of the most haunted places we've ever been to. I mm -hmm. think what's, I mean, for myself, I never really had a true paranormal experience until I shot at Waverly Hills. And really? I was only shooting shooting a horror film, and not a not a paranormal film. It was based on, I mean, do you understand? We put the actors that played the people that died in the sanatorium, such as the famous 502 nurse or the doc doctor that did all the horrific experiments or, or the person that was electrocuted or the person that was found frozen on the porch. We recreated all the characters in the exact places where those deaths happened. And wow. then we recreated the ghost stuff for the film the, the fictitious film based on true events, mm -hmm. we actually shot the ghost where they were supposed to have really appeared. So the goal was to put in that framework into the show that you actually would be putting the real vibes, the real energy into the yeah. show. That's exactly what happened. Through Death Tunnel, there were numerous amounts of real EVPs. They're not manufactured horror sounds you would do in oh. production. They're actually real EVPs, and there's mm. actual real frames of ghosts in that movie. And jumping, we can come back to this, but jumping to our premise, that's kind of what we have done with our new project, The Attached, is we went, decided to go into, we can talk more about that in a bit, but just because it connects. Yes, please. We have such success with Death Tunnel 
It's in 60 countries. It's still on the air, and it's like 14, 14 years old and still, still playing. And it, it became such a cult classic, we decided when we did our new project, which is called The Attached, that we would actually go into asylums and we would take really interesting cases or interesting stuff that was really potent and we would try to communicate with the spirits and through communicating with the spirits we would want to find out if they could use us as vessels our medium of filmmaking to tell their mm-hmm. stories themselves so uh, their evidence became their scripts so it was kind wow. of it became the show that the spirits wrote so the, based on the evidence we got and what they told us we would write that for their characters so they would actually have a voice through our film so we would give them a voice to our medium. So that kind of started in Death Tunnel, and we're kind of returning back to that. Because, it, you know, the documentaries were the documentaries, but when we went to do films, we wanted to tell real stories. And we said, well, why don't we let the spirits tell it? Yeah. Why don't we let them write their script? Instead of me making a fictitious story up, why don't we let... The spirits, through our evidence, what we're able to capture, what we're able to find out. Like, and he's a really spooky story that will get the listeners all goosebumps. Yeah. In the movie Death Tunnel, the nurse that jumps off the roof because she has a baby that could potentially have tuberculosis. Plus, yeah. back then, when you were unwed, it was very shameful. If anybody knows the story of the things that happened at Waverly Hills, they knew that yes. somebody hung themselves and somebody jumped off the roof. Well, we took the actress up to the same spot where they said she had jumped. She was in her 19, I think, 30s, 40s nurse outfit, and we put her right in that roof, five stories up on Waverly Hills. We took a 45-foot scissor lift up <clears> to <throat> the side of that building. She would actually jump off the roof onto the scissor lift so it would look real. Yeah. Well, we shot it. She was crying, and she jumped off the room trying to, you know, talk about whether she should do suicide. She can't go on. And she jumped off the roof and landed on the scissor lift. And I looked up to her. I said, cut. I looked up to her. I said, that was fantastic, Tori. That's her real name, Tori. Actually, Tori's her character name. Annie Bergstein's the actress. I said, that, Annie, that's amazing. It's phenomenal. And she goes, yeah, but you don't understand. I said, well, you're crying. And somebody goes, well, I'm, I'm not crying because of the part. I'm, I'm upset because I didn't jump. I, I was pushed. Oh, good God. Oh. And I said to okay, myself. Okay, now I do have goosebumps. <laughs> I said, could we, by shooting in these exact spots where these deaths happen and shooting the ghost parts, recreating the ghosts of the film in the places where they were, could we be picking up the real vibes? And could we be now, like supernatural detectives, finding out potentially now, hey, maybe that nurse did not jump from the roof on Waverly Hills. Maybe she was pushed. So that's mm. what I love about doing these films. Because yes. the way we go about it, we allow the spirits through the evidence and through the case files of many investigators, not just one or two, but many of them, to build their story and hopefully we can bring some new life to the subject. Yes. I like that. I like that premise. That's that's awesome that you guys came up with that. Oh, man. Well, it's actually kind, of, kind, of, kind of used a little bit on the Winchester house because it's known as the house that the spirits built. Or the mm-hmm, house that right. the ghost built. And she built a hundred hundred plus rooms for the victims of the Winchester rifle. And mm-hmm. then we we said, well, you know, we've been already doing that with our scripts, you know, because when I wrote Death Tunnel, I didn't have all the facts, and I just wanted to write a story why it was haunted. It wasn't enough that it was haunted, but I wanted to know why it was haunted. So. I thought maybe the reason why they're haunting the place, why you have apparitions there, is because 
there was there was no cure for tuberculosis back then, yet they kept those right. hospitals open. I couldn't find any dirt on Waverly Hills at all, which is kind of crazy because there's always some negative stuff. Something, yeah. When it, when it became Woodhaven Psychiatric Center, but when it was Waverly Hills. So I said, what happens if they were telling the patients when they woke up in the morning, you know, they would take the patients that died through the death tunnel so they wouldn't see the hearses pull up out front and cause morale to be low and that people were dying. And exactly. lose the funding for the hospital. So what happens when they woke up and said, hey, where's Ted or where's Bill or where's Nancy? And they go, oh, well, she got out. She got all better. <clears throat> and then they would sneak the body out of the death tunnel. So, so in the movie Death Tunnel... That's the story. And when we did that and the freezing on the balconies and all the other stuff, we started getting letters from the grandkids of the patients of Raven Hills that were still alive in their 90s. And yeah. they said, we wanted to let you know that our grandparents saw the film with us. And they said, what you're doing there is real. What you're doing is oh, what really happened. So now, the, how is that to tell the message? I mean, if you want to, so, you want to help a spirit cross over this unfinished business, mm -hmm. incomplete, while they're stuck, right? So I feel that through our shows, what makes our shows different is that we do that. You're giving them a voice. Yes, through our media. To our media, there's a way to do it. And it's not about going in a building and says, oh, my God, it's cold in here, and demon, 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 and everybody runs around scared. But why are you here? What do you need to tell us that we can help you find peace? And sometimes that's a scary thing because in the attached, which we're working now in post-production on, through the evidence, these stories that we have are based on some of the most biggest cases ever out there, you know, one of them involves the exorcism box that was used in the real yeah. Anna McKell, um, Annalise McKell exorcism, which became the movie, Emily, the um, exorcism of Emily Rose. Right. And to actually have that actual box that was used in that exorcism on that yeah. set, when you're recreating it, you can't help whether you're stirring up this energy and are you imprinting it in your film, in your media, and are you able to tell untold stuff with these attached items? So it's, it's quite, okay. a unique, quite a unique concept compared to just, you know, these shows on TV that they just go investigate or, and, right. you know, they try to find out hauntings. It's got much deeper rooted stuff involved in it and it, it's very emotional i have to tell you two of the cases in this new show that we're working on have to be the scariest stuff mm. and some of the saddest stuff because i find it sad too that's ever happened to us in our history we've been doing this for probably what 16 years now yeah 16 years we've been doing this so it's a, so people can get very excited about the attached because it's got some stuff and some evidence that is going to blow the lid off of what other people have got out there right now. Well, you're blowing my mind right now. I just that the that whole that whole premise is just that, that I just I don't have the words, but that's really awesome. I that's it's. It's fantastic. You're giving them a voice. You're, you're coming at it at a way other people have not come at paranormal stuff before. I, thank you. It's a breath of fresh well, air, I, truthfully. We need to yeah, thank you, and we need to thank the spirits, because the spirits are the real stars in our shows. It's not anything else. It's their, unfortunately, their tragic story. Like I think it's very fascinating. The science... I mean, let's just talk paranormal, because it shows about paranormal. It's just a bit here. There hasn't been a lot of much growth in the paranormal industry for quite some time. There hasn't been a lot of Agreed. groundbreaking evidence. There hasn't been a really a lot of um, groundbreaking breakthroughs and contacting the other side. And I would have to say, in our show, 
that's coming out via cash, and it should be. Which we're working on it now, and I'm, we're trying to get a late summer release. But I'm really looking more, like, I think, realistically for fall. But the evidence in this, and boy, do we do debunking, and I don't like that word, but we have to really know that what we're putting out there. I don't want to tell somebody it's haunted or not haunted. I'd rather mm-hmm. present the evidence and allow them to choose for themselves. Smart. But there is stuff here that is undisputably, undeniably debunkable. You cannot debunk it. So you have to accept at that point that it's real. Now, here's a question for everyone and our viewers, our listeners. Once you find out something like that, what do you, can you do about it? When you find something that is indisputably the evidence and now you're going home high as a kite, that you found this amazing evidence, they've told you something, you've uncovered something, you've backed it up historically, you've found the proof in the, in the historic society, what do you do about it then? Well, exactly. probably the most important thing is to look at why the lost souls or the spirits are stuck. And can we find closure by telling this story. What better way to tell this story but to a mass audience through television, um, such as Sci-Fi Channel, Definition America, the other stuff our shows are mm-hmm. and allow everybody to know the truth. Because they say the truth will set you free, so we feel if we can unveil the truth, maybe they can find some closure for their family that are still perhaps alive. Um to the lost soul that's still wandering, that still wants their story to be told, they want the truth to be told. I think that's really the best thing we can do. I don't see a lot of that, Tina. I don't see a lot of that on our shows that are currently playing now that we get to watch on Paranormal. I see them more Mm -hmm. focused on quick scares and jumps and maybe theories, but we don't get closure. Yeah. We don't get closure. And that is our next step for the paranormal field is to focus on closure. We open up the door, we cause, we stir the spirit up, and then we go, up, oh, time for commercial, up, oh, your 20 minutes, 20 minute show, your hour right. show is up. Well, we're going to leave. Bye. We stirred you up, and now we're leaving. Yeah, exactly. Philip, I want to really quick interrupt you here. Uh, a friend that we both know is in the chat room. Therese Bradley is in the chat room, and she says hello. Oh, hi, sweetheart. How are you, honey? <laughs> I hope we'll be seeing you soon in September. We have a we have an event. Um, we're hoping that the, all the COVID stuff will be finally all done, and we all can hug each other again. Yes. I'm a hugger. So, Therese... Uh, Therese, you're the first person I'm hugging in, in September, Ashmore, September 12th, Ashmore State, for my shameless plug there. But hi, <laughs> Therese. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Now, uh, tell me exactly how many films do you guys have out there right now? I've read some of them off, but I think there were a whole lot more that I missed. It's close to a have dozen. A... It's close to a dozen. Okay. About a dozen. And then you, I think the attached will make Lucky 13. But <laughs> while we, like I talked, you know, the thing about it is what's wonderful about this is our fans and friends and people that support us are very much part of this. And a lot of a lot of them have been through this journey of making the attach. So far, the attach is taking two years to make. But that is nothing unusual for us because, to be honest with you, one of our fave docs, which is Spooked, and the other one is Children of the Grave, the first one, the, the Children mm-hmm. of the Grave 2, which is wonderful. Oh, yeah. But my, yeah. Personal, my personal favorite, Children of the Grave, the first one, took two and a half years to make. And why do they take so long? First of all, we fund them ourselves so the network yeah. doesn't get control on editing it and making it sensationalized and false. Also, we need a lot of confirmation. We've been back to some of these asylums. We found these lost souls at two or three separate times and also contacted six or seven different paranormal groups and investigators to have collaborating stories so we're not just 
saying right. this is an urban myth, an urban legend. Um, but this is actually documented, you know, um, that this is actually something that we feel very strongly that will help the spirit cross over. So mm-hmm. we want to tell this story emotionally. We want to tell it authentically. Yeah, we may have some very filmic, very cinematic parts to add a movie vibe to it. But the story is based on the true story, the true things that happen. I mean, a lot of people don't understand in the Annalise, Annalise Mikkel story just how horrific that exorcism. People don't know. She had 67 exorcisms, Tina. Oh. 60. Seven. And you hear people okay. that don't even live through the first one, you know? Yeah, 67 oh. of them. Oh. And people don't, and I don't want to give away the show, but I'll give you a little teaser. People don't know that she channeled multiple demons. They think an exorcism was one voice. But the truth of the story, she channeled several different demons. And are you ready for this to be really creeped out? One yeah. of them was Hitler. Oh, and Yuck. that was very fascinating to me because she was German, you know, um, just about the evil and how evil would connect. Um, so it's going to be a hell of a scary and a very emotional ride. Be attached. Get your Kleenex out to wipe your tears and to wipe the pee <laughs> when you're scared to death. <laughs> Oh, you you crack me up. Now, I, I have a question for you. Now, one of the films that uh, is out there, you both worked on, it's called Dead Still, and it was done in 2014, correct? Yes. Okay, That's all right. right. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, what is the premise of that show? Well, the premise is about a death portrait photographer in the Victorian era that takes pictures of dead people that the camera captures their soul and you see ghosts, see ghosts in there and then they fall victims to murders and then there's a mystery uncovering the murder. Okay. All right. So let me ask you, how long did it take you guys to produce this film? Um, From beginning to end. Written, it, started, it started getting written in 2012. And okay. Uh, it took about late till 2013 to get it all. It was about almost two years when we did that show. And then um, it was a great show because I I was inspired by the idea, by the Demental Mansion, the people that know St. Louis area, because I live in St. Louis. There's some phenomenal uh, haunted places out here. We all know the Lemp mansion of course but the mental mansion not many people know about the mental mansion and they were having a wake there and i don't mean a wake like a typical irish wake they actually mm-hmm. were doing a death portrait photography thing oh. when i went there to it they had all the statues with faces covered they had all their mirrors covered yep. and they had pictures with eyes covered so when the spirit was in the casket that they would not lose the spirit and have it go into mirrors, into mm-hmm. uh, people like you know, statues and stuff like that. I was so fascinated by that. I said, let's shoot it here. I got all the go-ahead to use the real props, the real locations, mm. everything in St. Louis. And then the finance company through NBC, I mean, it happens in film, moved the whole production to New Orleans because of the tax incentive, because we don't have a very good tax incentive in Missouri. Yeah. So they could get 35% back on the dollar. So we had to recreate all this set from scratch. Oh, and I man. wasn't overly thrilled with that, because we are known, we are renowned known to shoot, like I just had discussed, where it's actually haunted. Right. Well, uncannily, we, the house in Dead Phil, that at the beginning of the movie, that the the photographer investigates with his son is an old slave plantation house in New Orleans. And we were shooting there. And at the end of the shoot, there's an old telephone and it's in the first scene of dead still. 
Well, all of a sudden, we're sitting there wrapping up, and all of a sudden, the phone rang. And everybody looked at each other. We just got, oh, that's no problem. And then and Adam Johnson, who he's a, was the first AC, a wonderful gentleman, runs up and he says, I'm getting there. Beep. I kind of know I can't swear. Yeah. Out here. And I, said, what? I said, why? I said, and he picked up the wire. And it's it not connected. Even, yep. It was old, an old phone that was a yeah. prop phone. Yeah. And so it seemed like we attracted spirit also in that production. It seems like they seem to want to follow us. And then while we're talking about, about Dead Stone, I don't want to give this much energy because I don't want to um, focus on negative stuff. We have a negative world right now. It's a horrific world. And now, after the, the coronavirus, now we're in the riots, it's enough. And that kind of took a back Seat. Both Chris and I chose to put a back seat on on some of the issues we're having with Dead Still right now uh, because it's not the time. People need to heal, but it's at the same time it's important to hear what happened. All right, and you know what? Still. I'm gonna I'm gonna have you hold on to that. So we got a little mini cliffhanger here, guys. You guys get to hear about what's going on with Dead Still right after uh, we come back from a commercial. So you are listening to Illuminating the Paranormal on Para-X with my guest, Philip Adrian Booth, and we will be... Hey, this is Lee. And this is Michelle. And this is Dustin from the Dead Zone. Your source for everything paranormal, para S. I found it at last! Marla's Sacred Cauldron. This is the legendary artifact that has been whispered about in hushed tones for hundreds of years, and now it's mine! All mine! <laughs> Who dares defile the sanctity of my castle walls? Step away from the cauldron, you impertinent, muddy metal malt worm. Never! I've spent half my lifetime trying to discover your age-old secret of stirring the cauldron. Oh, for Merlin's sake, that's no deep, dark secret. Just tune into the Para-X Radio Network Thursday nights at 9 o'clock Eastern for more cauldron stirring than you can shake a wand at. Oh, well, uh, in that case, I, I guess I don't need to take up any more of your time, so I, I guess I'll be going. Not just yet. We've got a little unfinished business to take care of. That's this. Uh, <clears throat> That's stirring the cauldron with Marla Brooks every Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern on the Para X Radio Network. The views expressed and the opinions given by the individual host and their guests do not necessarily reflect those of Para X, its affiliates, or its sponsors. Welcome back, everyone, to Illuminating the Paranormal. My name is Tina Marie, and my guest tonight is Philip Adrian Booth. Philip, right before we went to commercial, I did interrupt you and have you stop talking. Um, there is something that is going on, everyone, with uh, the film Dead Still that Philip and Christopher created. And Philip, you want to give us an update about what's going on with that film? Yeah, like I said before, I don't want to focus on the negative part of it, but it's uh, more on a personal note for the people. We have a wonderful following and, and a lot of fan, fans, a lot of friends and people that step by us. And it's only right that, and I watched them go to bat for us recently on the Internet when a certain company came out with Dead Still. And I think that they deserve to kind of know a little bit about the story and where we're at with that. First of all, I want Chris and I both want to thank everybody in the film wants to thank everybody who believes in Dead Still. And it's hard for us in the companies because we put more than just 
it's not more than just a job. It's, it, it takes a lot of hours to make a film, and it feels like a baby when you deliver it, and you, you hold on to it. And it was very yes. hurtful to find a company calling the show Dead Still. And you asked me earlier, Tina, what the premise was about, and you asked me, what is that film about? Well, setting that up, basically the exact thing I had already said, minus that it's a comedy, or it's a dark comedy, but everything else, and it's more present, not present day, but it's it's not so focused on going into the afterlife and all that. However, mm -hmm. it's about a death portrait photographer. It takes pictures that they see ghosts, and even down to the very advertising, if people have seen our posts, it's almost, yes. I mean, I know you have it on your ad there. It's almost I identical, do. right down to the three people it standing is. there. With the girl on the it, right, the guy yeah. on the left, and the wife, who's a phenomenal actor for well, our film, the the vintage death were in the middle with the camera. Yeah. Well, now, it's enough it, to say we can. It's enough to say we can simulate the image. Okay. All right. right. It's enough to say well we can take the title because you can't legally copyright a title. I could call a movie, you know. Um, the same name and get away with it. But the problem here is it's not just the same name. It's a very similar premise and almost identical mm -hmm. marketing. And if you watch the trailers to our diehard beautiful fans, you will see it looks like they watched Dead Still because yeah. the shots are even the same. Yeah. So it starts to really break your heart when you see stuff like that happen. That happened with us, with Dark Place, dealing with people, um, very big companies that did Texas, Chain Mass Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the remake, way back in 2005. I think it was 2000, maybe 2000, 2005. Mm -hmm. The same thing happened. They were mm -hmm. sent a screener of the show immediately called up and said, we want you to direct Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the remake, and tell me what you did, why it looks like that, how cool, and then you're up for the top six directors, you get a call back, you didn't make it, and all of a sudden the film looks identical to yours. Yeah. So this isn't the first time this happened to us. <clears throat> so we decided we would reach out and because they have not reached out back to us in any way, we kind of wanted to see if we could put pressure on them to at least be accountable. Right. And let's see if maybe, you know, let's find out what happened. Unfortunately, it's going now in the legal hands. It's now all that's been contacted. The business okay. partners, you understand, this isn't just us. Yes. This is a sci-fi NBC Universal film. It's not just us. And there's something called Arizona Emissions Insurance, and that's going to have to be now examined. And that means, oh, I'm so sorry, I accidentally copied your idea. I'm so sorry, we had the same idea. I'm so sorry, I had a dream. I didn't know it was like yours. Well, guess what? Uh, that's what Arizona Emissions that's what Aaron yeah. Insurance is for. And we're hoping that they do the right thing and that they come to terms with that. I really don't want to go into a long, drawn-out legal battle. No, because and that's, that's fine. Funded, yeah. by a big, funded by a big company. They can freeze that for many, many years. Mm -hmm. We really just want to stand up for the independent filmmaker that is constantly being squashed because big companies think that they don't have the money to fight it in court or nobody will know it. I don't care if it's just a, you know, our film, I don't consider our film a B movie, but the mentality out there, I don't care if it's a B movie, a C movie, a D movie, an F movie, right. a Z movie. It was someone's creative entity that created that with passion, that had the high of a newborn child going in, into that with bright eyes, excited, bringing everybody on board to make an entity and to have it almost completely copied with such a disregard and disrespect mm -hmm. that they're a small company and they won't fight, so F them. Yeah. That's why we decided to stand up on Facebook, why we started 
we got comments back like, oh, the booth cult. Well, they're calling their <laughs> friends the booth cult. Well, I that, love them. That's okay. I'll wear the whatever. T-shirt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we made, so my thanks goes out to everybody. We made a big difference. And we, we stood up for the Indies. Without, whether we will pursue that, right now it's starting to get into legal and discovery, mm-hmm. which is, means where you come up with the paperwork, the proof. Now we may have to stand quiet because it now may interfere with the actual legal action. But Got it. Nope, understood, sir. But I just okay. want to just clear that up, that we're grateful to everyone and we were heartbroken and still are, but we do need to move forward. And Understood. So, um, that's where we're at with it. Good. And, and I agree with you. When you make a movie, there, there are actors, there is time. Um, it's not just money. It's blood, sweat, and tears that go into these projects. And then they get produced. They're out there for people. And even after you're done and it's av- available for people to see on sci-fi, Destination America, wherever, it- it's still, you're still kind of watching over it. Like you said, it's, now it's a child. You're watching it grow. You're watching the audience grow. So well, it, it had to be sweetheart, disheartening. This is the problem. But, sweetheart, this is the problem. It's still on sci-fi. Yeah. That's the problem. Uh, yeah. You see, we're very proud. An independent movie, usually the life, the shelf life of an independent movie is usually no longer than a year, maybe two years max for mm-hmm. their license. It's still playing on sci-fi, and it was released in 2014. Yeah. That's six years later. It had such a wonderful reception and such a cult following. So that's uh, yeah. kind of the problem. It's not like it went away and disappeared. It's right. still on the air playing. Yes. So the, when you go to advertise it, now the other company's advertising it, and it now they don't up. know who they're watching. And they're, exactly. You know, and now it becomes confusion. Yes. And if um, they every- watch that and they don't like it, right. then they don't watch our film and see that where it becomes a problem. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, for everyone who is listening, or if you're in chat, uh, just to let you know that uh, the picture that uh, Philip was talking about that was kind of recreated by this other um show is on Illuminating the Paranormals page on Facebook. So if you hop over there and go to Illuminating the Paranormal, it's right at the top of the page. Take a look, make up your own mind, let, and, uh, you know, let it, let me know. Let me know what you think about that. So it's just, and, it, uh, and it you're blew not me gonna, away. You're not going to hear from me that I'm gonna, not going to say, hey, if you feel like writing something illuminating to them... And going yeah. to the website, please, by all means, do so. But at this point in time, we, because we're in the actual discovery right. stage of it, we're not allowed to do that anymore. Nope, understood. But our fans are welcome to do it, and we love you for doing it. But like I said, it's not about spreading negativity. It's about spreading the heartbreak of what it's like to have something yes. taken from you and being squashed because someone has more money than you do. And that's mm-hmm. not right. No, I, I totally agree. And yes, I was kind of more or less incensed when I saw it, and I just was could not believe it. But I will have to say that over the past couple of days, with a lot of people um, making comments on the other station's show page, um, anything that was on Facebook that had been popping up, uh, like in the feed, that I don't see it anymore. I don't see that other uh, show popping up in the feed have any you longer. Noticed, have you noticed the other show's gone now for the advertising? Yeah. You're absolutely right. Yes, yes, it is. Gone. It's it's not popping up anymore. So maybe maybe they're seeing, you know, the 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 light. You know, maybe they are. I we can only hope because I I think what was done was. Probably innocent, but it was wrong in the end. So, but hey, I I am part of the fan club. Like I said, I'll wear the t-shirt proudly well, of, the, of the booth cult. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Thank you. You Thank guys you. are awesome. You have always been so sweet and so nice. And I don't know about you guys, but I love listening to either one of the Booth brothers speak because they just they just have that magic voice that makes you want to listen to every word coming out of their mouths. <laughs> Aww. I love you guys. I'm going to hug you. I'm going to hug you. <laughs> well, I'll see you at Silcon. <laughs> that was, that, yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Because yeah, uh, yeah, I know you'll be at Ashmore, but will you also be at Silcon in September with, with Chris? Um, I probably, I will be out there. I will be at Ashmore to do the event and I'll, I'll okay. I'm sure I'll go to Silcon because I'll, I'll be there. Um, mm-hmm. I love I love interacting with with people, and I love meeting the people who help us, the supporters. I love talking to people, and that's part of the whole thing. And so I'm looking really forward to that. I, I know that our Ashmore gig is, I think it's, I don't have it in front of me, but I believe it's September 12th. And, it is. Um, I don't have the time. But you can find it on any one of our Facebook pages or on mm-hmm. Ashmore State's website. It will be September, and it will be really cool because we also have some new um, devices, some new ways of investigating we're doing there to, to, to change things up a bit. Great. We're also going to be, you know, um, be probably at, at that thing. Probably we'll have, I'm hoping we'll have the attached, we should be ready for people to, to get and to look at and watch. We'll have a huge screener there of it, or maybe even a screening, so... Um, that'll nice. be really good. And, and going with the attached, um, I have never, I gave up this uh, four years. I don't know how much time we have got left on the show, but I wanted to say I gave up. Go, um, you're good, go. For four years. I'm sorry? You go ahead, you get you get some time. Go ahead. Oh. All I was just saying is um, I gave up investigating for four years, and I got fed up of the industry being all the same. It mm-hmm. just was getting all night vision and all demonic and all, you know, the same staged silliness. And it just felt like it was a commodity more than actual, the excitement of really proving the afterlife exists. Yeah. And the high to me always was, if we could prove undoubtedly that, the afterlife, something exists bigger than all of us, it gives us faith that there's something beyond death as human beings. And that makes our existence not more meaningful, that this isn't just all there is, you know, that there's something right. bigger after that. And I think that's the, the big point of that. And some of the stuff we were able to put in the attached and the evidence and, and the stories, never mind, the stories are mind-blowing, you, I, I mean, already, people have already seen some of the screeners, they've already seen some of this, they've seen the teasers throughout the events and stuff. There wasn't a dry face in the house, there wasn't a dry eye yeah. in the house. There wasn't on the, some of the other stuff. They were looking over their shoulder when they left. And a horror movie, as a filmmaker, is hard to scare people because everything has been done and then in other movies, it's hard to make people cry because almost everything's been done. And mm-hmm. I think it's quite an achievement if you can create emotional responses. Because I believe you communicate with the afterlife with emotional responses. I don't believe necessarily you're going to put a K2 or EMF meter, or SLS, whatever you're right. using, a periscope, whatever cool device you've got, you're going to get interaction with spirits. I really believe, just like the old belief that God is inside you, you don't need a temple, you don't need a church to go find God, I don't really think you necessarily need a paranormal device to communicate with a spirit. You certainly need Agreed. one to prove its existence, you know, technically. Mm-hmm. Right. But you don't need it to have that experience. What you need, in my opinion is an open mind and an open heart and compassion. If that like spirit that. is enough consent that you are a vessel that it can trust, I, I, actually, I should not use the word it, but I don't know which sex the spirit may be, but the spirit exactly. can trust, we'll say. If you have compassion and the spirit can trust you, 
you're much more liable to have a ex- personal one-on-one experience that could change your life than you are going in max to the gourd with every device made out there and people are getting nothing. If you do not have that going in, it's unlikely you will have much of a rewarding experience. You may end up blowing a picture up five million times and saying, I see a face Mm -hmm. in it because you so badly want to see something. And another thing that I really believe, the less we know about a place, the less we know about a haunting, the less we know about what happened there, the more we're able to be have an open slate clearly to receive information and prove it exists. If I yeah. go into a place and I don't know something horrific happened and I get evidence of something on an SLS that's showing a horrific event, I'm not talking about SLS that someone's jigging and dancing or mm-hmm. walking around, but doing a specific thing that historically is backed up that cannot be disproved and you can communicate with it, then you've got contact. If you know, say, Joe or Rick haunts that place and you go in asking Rick or Joe to appear, you're already subliminally planting this stuff into your head and most likely will have a subconscious experience subliminally instead of actually having a documented experience. If you have an experience and you go home and all of a sudden you read an article two weeks later that that happened there, yeah. how exciting is that? Because you didn't yes. know. Yep. Yep. So I, I, I love And I totally decide. agree. Yeah. Yes, I, I agree. I really think that that's somewhat where we're failing with this because there is an experiment called the Philip experiment, ironically. And it was done in 1974, I think. I could be wrong. I have to do my research better. It was a long time. 74, 78, so don't quote me on that. But what it was is they took six people into a house. Now, this is a movie was made on this. Highly recommend the movie. It's called The Quiet One with okay. Jared... Harris, Richard Harris's son, and Olivia Cook, who's from Bates Motel. And it's based on that experiment. And they took six people into a house and told them it was haunted by the ghost of Philip. And they would see the table rise and they would smell Philip's cologne or the flowers he used to give. And they would hear him sing and all this stuff. And after that whole experiment, they took the evidence and they, and they, all the people had that experience. Every one of them had that experience and the documentation, the camera documented that this is crazy. I can show you the real footage. It'll blow you away. That the table rose up, they got an apparition and everything. And then they took it to the professor who was conducting the experiment, and he said, well, there's only one problem, guys. And he said, what? None of that's true. Yeah. We made all that up. There is no filler. There are none of that. But every one of them had that experience. Now, why that's exciting is that shows that every individual with their belief system has the power to manifest supernatural power to create something that doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. Now, are they creating something that really happened? Well, if they were lied to and they manifest something that was not backed up, they created something. It doesn't mean, oh, well, damn, you know, oh my goodness, I didn't see a ghost. What it means is we have the power, Tina, Mm -hmm. to manifest supernatural energy and create activity. So if we don't know what we are seeing going in and we get the experience and we do the research after, but instead of before, boom, we have yeah. much more chance of really having something that happens. Now, I find that theory 
amazing. And I can't believe in the paranormal industry with so many shows and so many gadgets and so many people, I think there's close to 20,000 paranormal teams in the United States of America. And all of them are still operating on their research, fat, which I, I am a big stuck of doing historic research before I tell a story about Waverly or St. Albans Asylum. I love St. Albans. Or Randolph Asylum is another wonderful asylum. I get that. But if I really want to find supernatural power, I really need to start not knowing much about the place. I think that's yeah. kind of where we need to steer this industry. We need to go in not knowing much about it. Because if I didn't know there was a Susan that was haunting the place, okay, get this. Is Susan there? And then I get Susan on the obulus or spirit yeah. box or whatever. I go, how exciting, right? Right, well, what right. What happens if I go in there don't know there's a Susan, and then I get Susan, I go, I don't know who Susan is, and then I do the research and found there's a Susan there. Now I know without a doubt I did not have a hand in manifesting that with my own psyche. Exactly. Yep. If we're, I don't want to get spiritual on you. Everybody knows. I'm sure they're sick of my spiritual posts on Facebook, but whatever. It's the same thing. You attract, you're a magnet. You attract what you focus on. So Agreed. you're going to put it, mirror what you get. Mm hmm Yes. So that's something I think is really important. I, I like that. Now, we are just down to just a couple minutes, so remind everybody again uh, that it's going to be, let's see, September 12th, I believe, is that when you're going to be at Ashmore State, correct? That's Saturday, September 12th. We're going to be there, in, yeah, we're going to be there September 12th. I don't know the time, but I'm sure it's on Ashmore, Ashmore State's Facebook page and, of course, Chris and my Facebook page, and it will be the, uh, I think, Eventbrite. It'll be there. We're going to mm -hmm. try some different things, different things to, to try to get different things that happen there, different answers, different approaches this time. We're not Good. going there just to do the same old thing. We're done there, been that. We're not doing that. And then, I, and then on the other thing, I'm working hard on the attached and post-production. You know how we are perfectionists. It's going to blow people <laughs> away. It's going to be available in fall. With a bit of luck, it will be available at Ashmore. Certainly Scarefest, which is the following. Is it? I think Scarefest moved it to October. I, Did I they move it? Dates in front of me, but Scarefest is in October. Yes, yeah, Scarefest now. is October 23rd and 24th. Thank you, Tina. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, we will definitely have it available for fall. So that's another thing to be actually seeing the very first screening of the attached, being able to get your autograph copies, being able to really talk about what happened. We bring some evidence in that's never been seen before and unlike anything on any other show ever done before. And we're really are looking forward to sharing it with everybody and hoping it opens up some new techniques of investigating, some new ways of um, inspiring the spirits to a appear. So you're just sitting in a room for eight hours and hope that you get yes. Oh, it's cold in here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Philip, we we are down to like thirty seconds. So, sir, thank you so much for being on the show. I have learned a lot, and I am so excited for September now. I get to see you guys again. Get to give everybody a hug because I've missed everybody so much. And will, will you come back again on my show? I, I have a ton of questions I will. left. I'll be glad to. <laughs> I Good. Know, I'd be glad to. I'd be glad to. I look forward to seeing everybody in September. And yes, let's get Pat. Let's stay safe and healthy. Let's yes. get better. Let's get back to exploring and proving the existence of the afterlife. And let's help them cross over. Yes. All right, guys. If you want to get a hold of me or want to see that picture about Dead Still, it is on Illuminating the Paranormals page on Facebook. Thursday night, I will actually be at a Hope and Healing event online. You can find that. It is literally called 
Hope and Healing online event, and that'll be that evening, so go check that out. Guys, thank you so much. I had a great time. Philip, we'll see you again, and you guys have a great night. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you.